Um, all right, everybody, we're going to start uh, our next fireside chat with one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, it's, it's, it's real when you have to pull out your phone for notes because they are so accomplished and have done so many wonderful things <laughs> on the planet. Um, Kishana Gray, Kishana L. Gray is up with us right now. Everybody give a round of applause to Kishana L. Gray, please. <laughs> Kishana has written in note form in English, Spanish, and Algonquin. <laughs> in Esperanto. Uh, a wonderful book called Race, Gender, <laughs> Deviance, and Xbox Live. Yeah. You also have a book that is coming out soon. I do. When? I do. Yeah. Fall, November 2018. Fall, fall, and On Being Black and in Contemporary Gaming Culture, The Journey to Intersectionality. Yes. That is fantastic. Yeah. I'm super happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. How's your GDC been? How have you been? How's it's things been going? It's been good. It's been good. So I specifically came for this event. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was kind of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to... Um, so, and shout out to Melissa, too, you know, for, for the invite. The Much invitation. love to Melissa and Ciara yeah. in the back. Yes. Um, so, um, it's my first GDC. Yeah, never really. Been, never been, never came. Um, but it, it's cool. Yeah. It's like a... It's a different vibe. Yeah. Because I mostly do, like, academic kind of conference spaces. So, yeah. I don't really do, like, industry ones. So, I really enjoy... And I don't want to take up space, either. No. You know, like, as an, as an academic, you know, it's not my lane. We were talking about lanes earlier. You know, sure. I'm in a different lane. So, I'm really, you know... Um, excited about interacting and engaging with a lot of folks who are doing really amazing things out in, in gaming. So I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Well, we're super happy to have you because you do amazing work. Thank you. So, like, I came across your work through Tanya DePass, who's also here. Yes. Um, and she was like, Kishan is super dope. And oh. you have a show about blackness and about gaming and about intersectionality and about statistics, which I'm a stat nerd. Yes. Um, <laughs> And they said, Kishana needs to be on your show. And we had our first show that had Kishana and Trey and Jerry Rustworm uh, called The Black Academic Show. It was a good show. Which was fantastic. It is, to this day, one of my favorite episodes of the show because we got to chop it up in a way that most gaming shows or conversations don't get to, yeah, yeah. to jump into, right? Um, through the years of your work, what have been some of the kind of um, overarching narratives that you've seen uh, in terms of uh, being people of color in the industry, being as folks in the industry. Yeah. Uh, and, and give the folks uh, in the audience and at home a little bit of information about some of the work you've been doing. Absolutely. So I think one of the overarching kind of themes is like we were talking earlier about this unicorn, mythical kind right. of like phenomenon, right? How people just don't think we're in the spaces. They don't think we, we make games. They don't think we play games. Um, and so in academia, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, because I think I, I just saw some numbers, like only 2% of the population actually has like a PhD. So it's a very small number. Yeah. And so the visibility of, of people of color and women of color in particular is very small. So when they see us, you know, it's kind of like the unicorn effect. And then when I tell them I research video games, even more, they're like, wait a minute. So there are all these layers happening and we don't understand how to make sense of you right now. Right. Um, but but it's, it's been good. I found my spaces. I found my people. You know, I found the, the places that value me and value my work. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to really focus on was centering you know, because I don't, I don't, I don't focus as my research isn't on, like on representations, like in games. You know, like the amazing work that like Tanya does. Um, so I cite her frequently. You know, the things that she's doing. My focus is more so on gamers, so the people who are in these spaces, centering and highlighting their stories. So the book that I had, Race, Gender, and Deviance in Xbox Live, it focused on um, specifically Black and African American and Puerto Rican gamers in particular, um, like focusing like on their narratives, their experiences with racism, sexism ableism, heterosexual, homophobia, all that stuff, really seeing how the space um, kind of like facilitates a lot of these isms, but also how the space kind of like affords like um, the possibilities of like community building and connecting with other people. So like for, for queer gamers in particular, you know, they have created these beautiful spaces like in Xbox Live and PlayStation Network, you know, other places I won't, I'm, is there an embargo? Can no, I say no, that? No, no, no. Okay, but anyway, in Xbox Live, um, <laughs> <laughs> they've really like created these amazing spaces where they're taking care of each other, where they, they're able to navigate different aspects of their identity. Um, and so it's really like this amazing like digital identity development happening. Um, and it's like a lot of like beautiful community building. And I'm just, I consider myself like an archivist. I'm just documenting that. 
You know, I, I never want to take up too much space in there. You know, I don't, I, I dismantle, you know, the power hierarchies and everything. And so I'm just archiving what's already there. And it's some beautiful, it's some dopeness that, that's happening. So yeah. I'm really thankful for folks that allow me into their spaces. You know, see, so like I've written about, you know, I, I write about, you know, I need diverse games yeah. all the time. I write yeah. about spawn on me all the time. So you, you were in my book, you know, about like the dope things that like happen. I'm sure there are folks like, I, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> He's so stupid. <laughs> Thank, thank you. But I want to make sure that you, that the industry knows, the academia knows, that the public knows about us. You know, the hidden figures like in gaming. I think yeah. that that's really important that we center those. So that's what I that's what I use my platform for mostly. Yeah. One yeah. of the things I love about your work is we have this conversation often about yeah. gaming is a very um, uh, young medium, right? In our lifetimes, I'm, I'll be forty this year. So in our lifetimes, we have seen nothing grow into a multi-billion dollar industry. And as we've seen in most conversations about history, about uh, uh, black accomplishment and, and, and black achievement, a lot of times those things are left out in the history books, right? We're doing a wonderful thing here, acknowledging Jerry, Jerry Lawson. But I feel like there are so many sisters that we never hear about. There's so many people that we don't hear about in those spaces. In your research, what are some of the things you found that have been kind of touchstones that you want to share with the, the folks yeah. at home about like how we have been a part of the culture for Absolutely. since its inception? Absolutely. One of the stories that I love telling, and it came from Anna Everett. Anna Everett, she's a really, a really amazing scholar. She's at UC Santa Barbara, I believe. So she um, highlighted basically how black and brown kids in the inner city with the arcades saved the gaming industry. Like that doesn't get talked about a whole lot. So the gaming industry was tanking, right? And so the fact that you know we were spending our quarters in the arcades, in these bodegas, and these corner stores, that saved the industry because they were looking, of course, analytics. I'll go ahead and throw that. That word's been thrown around a lot. They were looking at the numbers. They were looking at you know, how much money is being spent. And they said, OK, so let's not give up on this console thing just yet because I think there, there may be something to it. So I think that's one of the, the, necessary, the stories that doesn't get told, um, really how innovative, especially how black and brown kids really were a driving force in, in console gaming and getting, the, and getting games inside the home. So I think that that's really, really important. And there's also some very class and race distinctions like in games that, that we play. So I know uh, people often ask me why I'm like, my focus is like on console gaming. Um, we didn't have access to computers growing up. All, a lot of us didn't have access to, to a lot of that stuff. So you had to have money to, to have video cards, graphic card, all that stuff, the stuff that I don't know. And you know, if you're thinking like your mama could save up some money and get you like a Sega like at Christmas, and then that's that's the technology that you had. And so I think that that's also important, like to highlight, you know, how console gaming has been very much um, developed, like around race and class, like distinctions. And also, like um, something that I realized, Mexican American kids are like a huge consumers of gaming, and they don't get talked about. They get excluded a lot. You know, nobody really focuses on their consumption practices like within gaming. So that's just some of the things that I want to highlight and center like in, in my work, making sure that people know about, about these different stories. I mean, gosh, yeah. console gaming was my, was, was, was my gateway drug my jam, right. into computer science, into being techie, into, into looking at Absolutely. things that were in that space. I'm sure it was for Absolutely. you as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Sidetrack, what was your first console? Nintendo. Yeah. I, my own? Yeah. Sega was my own. So mama bought me one, but before that, you know, my brother had Atari, brother had, brother and cousin had Nintendo, but my own was, um, I had a Sega. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the push button one, I know there was one, like the first one had like the, the, the switch button, uh -huh. but I had the push button one. I yeah, got yeah. maybe like the second generation Sega or something. Mm -hmm. So Sega was my, that was oh, my first one. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting. I want to make a no, comment. Please. It's interesting. You know, we were talking, my, I'm friend, my friend is here. So we were like, we're from rural Kentucky. We were not from a city. We were excluded from like arcade culture. And it was interesting, like the communities that we developed really like around gaming in black rural communities. Um, you know, so like for instance, we couldn't afford a console, so he would have like he would have like the Nintendo 64. So everybody would go to like his house and like play. I had the Sega. Like other people had different things. So it was interesting, like these networks and communities, you know, that that we would build, especially being excluded from like you know city centers that where you saw like a lot of the cool like gaming happen. I said a shout out my friend Terrence because we've been like gamers like hi forever. Terrence. <laughs> um, when you when you look at some of the research that you've done, 
one of the things that we always feel is an interest, well, one of the things that we know is an interesting thing about tech-centered spaces yeah. is finding places where you feel uh, welcomed and you feel like you have community. Do you feel like consoles and video games at this, at this point have been able to help foster some of that for folks who, when they leave their, when they leave their consoles, leave their games, feel like they may not have that? Do you feel like there's been stuff in your, in your research that has kind of given the idea that that is the thing that actually sticks when, when it happens? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what I've seen the most is kind of like this transmediated thing happening, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll connect with folks like in Xbox Live, but we're not just connected in Xbox Live. So we'll go follow folks like on Twitter. We'll go follow them like on Facebook. They're different social media profiles. Um, and so, so it's like, so when you leave the space, you still have connections with folks, right? And I also think, I think it's beautiful, like the stories that like are happening, things that are happening like, um, like in gaming spaces, how they translate into, into social media. Mm -hmm. um, like for instance, like we, I think we, we were live streaming like Luke Cage while playing like Battlefield, you know? So it was like yeah. really interesting, like things that are happening. Um, and so I think it's really important that um, this, this concept of, of community, I think it's very important. Um, because, you know, like I said earlier, like a lot of people don't have those connections in their physical spaces, yeah. right? And so like, they have the space of Xbox Live like to go to. So I know Xbox, you know, I know, I, I feel like we have a love-hate relationship with Xbox. I know I've been very critical yeah. of like a lot of the spaces and things, but I also think that it's been like a wonderful space to allow a lot of, a lot of this community building to happen. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting yeah. thing, right? So like yeah. we had this, I remember when Xbox Live first implemented uh, chat, right? So you had voice chat, and you were like, yo, it's lit. We now have chat. We can talk to whoever we want to talk to in our spaces. And then the internet became the internet, and the internet did what it did. And then that became a thing where private chat then became the space where you were like, this is where I can find community. Yeah. This is what I can do what I need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. the archaeological dig of yeah. your work, and when you kind of go back and look at the, 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 the steps in which to where we've gotten here. Yeah. Are there any specific things that you look at and say, this particular moment in gaming helped to either bridge the divide or separate folks in a way that we hadn't seen before? Private chat furthered the divide. Ah. But, so let me, uh, let, me, let me explain that like, a little bit. So, of course, we all know what happens whenever they hear an accent. They hear blackness. They hear a woman. We know what happens in a lot of these spaces, right? Now, so we were lucky to have the private spaces where we could kind of isolate ourselves, right? So we didn't have to interact and engage in those toxic environments, right? But then it also got them off the hook. Uh. So the corporate stakeholders, the different people in the spaces, it got them off the hook to have to do something about the toxicity in the space, right? Mm. So they're like, okay, you're still happy. You're happy in your private spaces. Oh, good. We don't have to deal with it. But ever, whenever we were reintegrated back into you know, the live environment, though, the same stuff is happening, right? And so I think that it's, um, like, I don't know when I've made, like, a new friend in Xbox Live. Like, I haven't made a new friend, like, in years yeah. because I haven't connected and interacted yep. with anybody um, for years. So yeah. it's the same community. It's the same group of folks. Um, and, and that's cool, but I, I like making friends. I like making different kinds of connections. And it's so hard, you know, because people hear that I'm a woman. They see my avatar, and they're like, oh, she's a black woman. You know, because it's cool at first, because in the space, I, I speak, I have standard American English, so they think I'm a white kid. You know, so it's like different dynamics that I get until they figure out, you know, who, who I actually am. Um, so I think, of course, the private space, the private chat, you know, it was, it, it was a godsend. I was glad to have it, you know, so we could actually, you know, have those different spaces. But then, on the other hand, the toxicity is still there. Like yeah. We haven't really had like any kind of meaningful solutions to figuring that, that aspect out. Yeah. yeah. Time is flying. Is it time already? We have like five minutes left. What? It's already, it's flown. Oh, dang. Before okay. we let you go, yes. I want to hear about the new book. Oh. I want to hear all the dopeness about the new book. Yes. So there's a couple books coming out. So there's, so I have a book that I co-edited with David Leonard. He's a, he's a really dope scholar. He's doing a, he's, he started like some of the race and gaming scholarship like back in like the mid 2000s. Um, and so I'm co-editing a volume and we've got a, you know, some, some really amazing folks who've contributed their, their, their work um, into that book. But also my own um, book project is on, on being black and dot, 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 the journey to intersectionality. It's really capturing um, like this uh, digital identity formation in these spaces. Um, so, you know, a lot of us, and we, 
we don't pick and shoot. We sometimes think things happen where we have to say, okay, right now my race is more salient right now, or right now my gender is more salient right now, or my sexuality is more salient right now. So I know, you know, we talk about intersectionality like a whole lot, but in our in the everyday workings of our lives, you know, it really it ebbs and flows. Yep. You know, so I think the book is really focusing on, you know, like like whenever like hashtag Black Lives Matter, you know, when there's like a death or something, you know how blackness becomes like salient, right? But when Trump was elected, you know, gender like became very salient, you know, like especially for women within the space. Um, so I'm the book is really like kind of mapping like the path to where people can see, hey, I am all these things. I'm not just black, I'm not just man, I'm not just a woman, not, not just queer, like I'm all these things. And they all kind of interact and operate like in tandem with one another. So it's kind of like tracking that the, the come to Jesus story, if you will, <laughs> like, you know, when you've kind of, when you've come, come to realize, you know, just how dynamic, you know, the, the intersection of like your identities are. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of like what I'm doing with the book. I hope, you know, and it's, it's centering, you know, Xbox Live gamers. Um, there's also this one chapter. Do I have time? No, go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm geeking out it. right now. So there's this one chapter, and it focuses on like essentially like the black diaspora. So there's this community that I'm a part of, and so it has men who identify as black, but some of them are Nigerian. There's some from Brazil. There's some from Puerto Rico, and some from the United States. Um, and so it was a very contentious group for a long time, right? Huh. But it was different different deaths that happen in these different parts of the country, especially related to police brutality in like Brazil and then Puerto Rico um, and the United States, really brought that community together. Yeah. And so there's like a really powerful quote that the, one of the brothers said, he said, I guess the ghetto looks the same everywhere. And so it kind of showed like their paths are coming like together, you know, when it was a very contentious kind of um, um, environment. Um, effort. So, yeah, I, I love that chapter. It's a really awesome. You chapter. are, yeah. again, one of my favorite people on the planet. Yay. Thank you so much. Everyone, Cassandra L. Gray, please. Yay. Thank y'all for having me. Get the book. Yes, get the, get book. the book. Get the book now. Get the book. <laughs> you can uh, yes. at Kishana Gray, K I S H O N N A G R A Y. You can probably search Unicorn Glitter and find me on Twitter. And I have like links to all those things there. So, yeah, I appreciate you. That. Thank yeah. you again. Yes, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me. You're amazing. I love you. Love you. Thanks so much.